Welcome to the award-winning Rhythms of New York. I'm Dave Brodsky, your producer and your host. Sitting to the left of me is the one, the only, the fabulous. Hi, I'm the co-host, Selinez Bosque. In 2009, the Rhythms of New York is a proud recipient of the Beta Award for the Best Entertainment Variety Performing Arts Program. <laughs> now, I was given the trophy, but the trophy actually goes to everybody who's been involved. Yes. We've been working on the show for about two years. Putting a show from conception, from idea to actual broadcast, takes about a year. All of us have to take classes, and we're trained in how to do everything here. It doesn't make us all experts, but we're trained in everything. We're trained in cameras, audio, switching. But do you know what makes the show? What? Our guests. Yes. We have the best guests there are in New York City. We do. We have acts ranging from beginners to professionals. And today we have a great act on as well. Her name is Allison Greenfield. And you'll hear about her. You'll talk about it. We'll talk with her in a few minutes. Uh, but right now we want to thank people who have been with us for the past year. We do. We want to thank the director, Al Carton. Now, Al Carton, unfortunately, is sick tonight. Yes. So the first time in a year that he hasn't been with us. And in his place, we have a gentleman by the name of? David Marine. Now, David Marine, you've heard of before because he has been around for years yes. in television. And he has a fantastic show. The show's name is? Um, TV uh, Exclusivo. Uh, he, said it, he said it really good. He was worried about that. I know. I don't speak Spanish. TV Exclusivo. It's, it's shown all over the world. Yes. And, and he's also known as El Chapin. So. Right. He's, he's a really, really great guy. And we'd like to thank David for stepping in tonight. We Thanks miss Al. But well, we'd like to thank David. And, of like course, we have Edwin on cameras. Edwin has been with us since the beginning. We have our good friend Robert, Robert Stanley. Stanley. Now, Robert Stanley not only does cameras. Robert Stanley also does the set does design. Set designs. He's the, floor that, the floor that Allison is sitting on tonight was designed, created, built by Robert. Very creative, very talented. Mm -hmm. um, we'd like to thank who else? Well, we also have Kevin, who helps us with the audio. He does audio our mics and stuff. And, and we have Miles Carlton. He does a lot of great stuff on We set. have Alexis Arzu. He likes to visit and mm -hmm. he loves the snacks. We have a lot of people. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of people to help us with the show. We also want to thank the people over at BronxNet for their support. Definitely. Um, I, so a number, I've been in the entertainment business for 25 years. And a number of years ago, I happened to meet Michael. Michael Max Navi, who's the director of BronxNet. And he said, well, why don't you get a show? And I said, you know what? I, I don't think I can do a show. And he encouraged me over the years. Every time I saw him, he said, listen, you need to get a show. You know a lot about the music. You know a lot about the business of, of, of the music business. The business of the music business? Yeah. Or something like, something like that. You know a lot about the music business because the music business is a business. It makes like a tongue twister. But it all is involved in the entertainment business. I mean, here we are on television. And I always say, hello out there in television land, which is a quote that I got from that's his open the Honeymooners, line. right? Yeah, that's his the open Honeymooners. Line. That's his favorite. And right now, we're, trying to we're talking to our friends in, around the world because people are seeing us on television in the New York City metropolitan area, and they're also seeing us on the Internet. Yes, they and are. And we actually have about 10,000 hits a week on our website. People love the show. And they're always calling mm -hmm. Dave at like 3, 4 o'clock right. in the morning. Not me. But Selena's has the fan club. You have to go to our website. You'll see the website information at the end of the show. You go to our website, you can find about a Selena's fan club. They love Selena's because she's pretty Aww. and she's gorgeous. And I'm sitting right next to her, so I'm lucky. Thank you. That's <laughs> my award. So Selena's is my award. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice. But you know, like I said before, this show is about everybody. It is. You and, know? And, and we also, it's about the artists. Right. Um, we present the best artists there are. We do. This is like a little jump for them, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so busy doing so many things, trying to get their music on board, and we want to be part of that. We right. want to be part of helping them maybe get to the next level, mm -hmm. you know? Because there's so many acts out there, and, and everyone's trying to fight for the same thing. So why not have a show like ours? Come to our show. Right. You can play your music. We interview. We talk about where you came from, where you're going, where you want to go. We do the teasers mm -hmm. where we can do more information about the artist. And you never know. We might get that phone call and one of our acts will say, you know, because of Rhythms of New York, so-and-so called me or I got an invitation to go somewhere bigger. I no. mean, that's what we want to be. Now, we don't do this show to get an award. It's great to be named as the best entertainment variety performing arts program. In fact, I was really, really surprised when we won. 
but that shows that people watch the show, they know that we have a quality program. The production quality is excellent, the people we work with, and all the artists that we have on here. I mean, I find that we do our teaser for the purpose of, so that we can get to know the artist. Definitely. And we get to know the artist a couple of weeks before we do the show. Mm -hmm. We put it up on our YouTube, mm -hmm. and we have a great artist on today. And the artist on today is a woman named Allison Greenfield. She is not, uh, she, I don't want to, I don't want to just say, like, she's not really a traditional artist. She's not the girl who comes up here with a guitar or the no, keyboards and surprises. does the songs over and over again. You're going to be surprised with seeing Allison today. We have a colorful set. Thank you again to Robert Stanley. It's a great program that we have. We believe we have a great program. And we know that people at home like to watch us. And we know that our peers like to watch this program. And it's like I said, it's great to be recognized. We do this show to help the artists. We do this show to help the community. Definitely. We know that it's very limited nowadays to get new music out there. Well, I thank Dave for making me his co-host. I found Salinas on MySpace. This is I have like 5,000 friends on MySpace right now. Yeah, and people come crazy. to us literally from all over the world. They want to be on our program. But it's called the Rhythms of New York. Definitely. And, the, and it's all based here in New York City because New York City is the media capital of the world. It really is. And we have the best talent that there is. We do. We have a whole, there's a whole mixture of talent. So now you can tune into Allison Greenfield. Take me home, I would not betray if you ever came back to me. And if you wanna say, say it, you could take me home. I would not betray if you ever came back to me. This human behavior, you're the sweet neighbor. I want to open them up, dissect them, and see. It's all.
Welcome back to the Rhythms of New York. I'm Dave Brodsky. And I'm Selinez Bosque. We have a unique artist on today. She actually prefers the word unique. Her name is Allison Greenfield. She has a connection with Madonna. She is a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist. Multi, she plays a lot of unique <laughs> instruments as well. Allison Greenfield, welcome to the Rhythms of New York. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. You're welcome. So we met you through our mutual friend by the name of Eric DeFontenay from Music Dish Magazine. Mm -hmm. You originally came from Columbus, Ohio, went down south, attended university, and are now here in New York, in Brooklyn, USA, as Ralph Crandon would say. Right. So tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Um, well, now I'm in New York and I'm pursuing my music career and I'm just trying to change things up a bit lately with the different instruments like the toy piano and the xylophone and the snare drum and just really I, I want to have fun and I want to perform and I'm just really interested in the New York music community which I've had the pleasure of um, being a part of. And, and now you started out in academia. I like, to, I like to use the word academia. It's not, it's not a nut from Hawaii, right? <laughs> like macadamia. Right. <laughs> academia. You're a very intelligent woman. Thank you. You have a master in fine arts. Mm -hmm. You're fine. And she has a master in fine arts. Okay, don't harass well, It's no, a no. master it's of fine arts. Master yeah, yeah. of it's fine arts. actually in creative writing. Got it. Writing. And you originally became involved in the music scene, if I can recall. You applied to the University of British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And you had to, a part of the application process, you had to provide them with a CD. Yes. Right. And that CD became an EP which people requested mm -hmm. and you started performing out mm -hmm. from that CD. And tell the audience a little bit about that process. Well, yeah, I, as you mentioned, um, I, was, I was applying to many different grad schools and something I liked about British Columbia's program was that they included all sorts of writing mm -hmm. and one of the writing was musical writing, which I didn't see in any other program. Um, and so I had to make a CD and I just recorded six songs. I had always written songs, but I hadn't really given them to the public. I didn't feel comfortable sharing them like that. Mm -hmm. And so this was something that I actually kind of, I guess, set in stone or set in, you know, tape recording. Right, yeah, right. And you also <laughs> um, have a history of musical theater when you were a child. Yeah, yeah, I right. started out doing that. And so when I, I then I decided, you know what, I kind of got the bug. I, I wanted to play for people, my own music, finally. And I had a band with me in Ohio. And then when I would play shows, people said, oh, well, do you have a CD I can buy? And I said, no, I haven't made a CD. And then I thought, oh, yeah, I made the CD for grad school, and it is six of my songs. So then I just would color on it and Sharpie and mm -hmm. draw little hearts and stars and Allison Greenfield. And, and then I you know, eventually got um, a designer to make the actual insert for it, and I got it printed and everything. Um, What's your process when you're writing songs and incorporating the music into it? Um, the process, a lot of times it just hits me. I'll wake up from sleeping or a dream or I, I'm, a lot of times I'm walking home from the train here living in New York and you know a, a lyric will just come in my head or a, a rhythm or a melody. Everything usually just kind of thrusts itself upon me. Yeah. It just comes to me. Some people try to sit down like, oh, I'm going to try to do this and do that. And sometimes I do that especially because instruments have been given to me lately, so I kind of sit down with it and check it out, out. and, and I want to see what it's about. But right. a lot of times I have this like need that I have to create something, and I feel like the creative forces are kind of telling me what to do, and right. I just do it. Do you record it when it hits you, or you jot it down, or do you walk yeah, around and record it? Yeah, um, mostly I, if I'm at my home, then I do record it. Okay. I just record it on my garage band on my Mac computer, which is great. Cool. I used to record on tapes, cassette tapes. Cool. Now you were in Alabama attending graduate mm -hmm. school, but you were coming back to New York to perform. Mm -hmm. And that's, you, you fell in love with New York because you thought you New York was a unique musical scene, because you're a unique person. And uh, in between going from Alabama to coming to New York, tell the Madonna story. Well, so it was actually right when I moved to New York um, in 2008, and I was looking for work, and I had decided I, I didn't really want to be in academia anymore. I, I'd been a high school mm -hmm. teacher, I'd been an um, instructor at university, and I just wanted to pursue my music more, and I was just trying to get a job here and there. And so I applied with a tutoring agency, and then they called me one day, and they said, we have a kind of interesting position we want you to apply, we want you to interview for, we think you're a good candidate. And it was to be the homeschool teacher for Madonna's personal trainer's son. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and it was part of the Sweet and Sticky tour that Madonna um, recently did. 
And so I had just moved to New York, but then I thought, you know, there could be possible good connections with that, and I would get to travel a little bit. And so I took the job, and it ended up um, not being the great experience I thought it was going to be. It was certainly a learning experience, um, but it was it it, um, it didn't help me kind of reach my goals as fulfilling the things I want to do with my life and express myself. I mean, it definitely kind of hindered that. I you know, my any my desires to kind of express to the world or, or do anything like that. Right. That was nobody's priority. I mean, my priority was, you know, dependent on someone else's priority whose priority was dependent on Madonna. Right. So how did this come to be, Tuscaloosa? So that actually I started recording when I was in Alabama in graduate school, and I said, you know, I want to do a full-length CD, and I want to have it more professional than my first um, EP, which I recorded for a grad school application. Right. And... Um, so I started recording it at home, and then I ended up needing someone else to help me. And so my friend um, said, you know, well, a friend of mine works in recording. That's what she does. She works with Mary J. Blige and David Byrne and The Roots and all these people, and I think she might like your stuff. So I sent her my music, and she said, yeah, let's work together. Yeah. So then I would come here because I was still finishing up graduate school. I would come to New York, and we would have these really intense, like, three days of recording. And then I would go back to New York. I mean, sorry, back to Alabama. I never wanted to leave New York when I was here. Okay. But then I would go back to Alabama, and I would, you know, listen to the mixes on my headphones and give her notes, and then come back here, re-record it again, and then, you know, do the same thing, do mixes over email, which is, it's good that there's email, but sometimes can be difficult because you're not just right together. Have you played at any venues yet? In New York? Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've played all over. I mean, I played... Nationally and internationally, I've played in Mali, West Africa. So how does that feel going from recording, and you're recording, you have all this in your head, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden now you're in front of a live audience, and you're out there with, a, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather rec I'd rather sing live in front of an audience any day than record. I, I, don't, I think the recording experience, um, it's, it's just, uh, it's not the same as just kind of like giving yourself because the mics have to be in the right place, and your instrument has to be, and they, you know, everything has to be recorded well so it can be then mixed well and I like I really like to feed off of people and my whole point of making art is to hopefully connect with people right. I like so, the word art because that's what yeah, you do is. everything is colorful mm. if you take a look at your arm yeah. here those are song that. lyrics uh, to one of her songs that is so awesome that is so cool <laughs> and if you buy her CD the name of the song is young girl in the music world right and it's a very interesting story with that and yeah. you play a lot of instruments um, Normal people play, no, I won't say normal, we're unique, right? But a lot of people play with uh, <laughs> guitars and they play with keyboards. But you play with a toy, I'm not going to use the word toy, she doesn't like that. A miniature, what do you want to use no, the word? No, the toy, it's called okay. a toy piano. Toy That's piano. Its official yeah, name. It's a toy and you also have a xylophone. Yeah. And you have a, a snare drum. drum. Yeah. She does this. I mean, the, the sound is great. We're here in the studio. Everybody loves the sound. Cool. How did you choose those instruments? Um, well, you know, something I love about life is that sometimes things are chosen for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I was given the toy piano and the xylophone and another xylophone I have at home and the snare drum. Mm -hmm. And so people give me things. They say, oh, I think you might like this or want this. And what, what are you looking for? What kind of unique instrument are you looking for? You went to Africa. Do you incorporate any African instruments? Well, when I started, I recently started doing a cover of um, Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise on mm -hmm. a xylophone. Mm -hmm. And I really was thinking, mm, this might be better on a balaphone, which I played when I was in Africa. Um, but I'm not sure. Now I think maybe it's, it's okay on a xylophone. But I don't, I mean, the djembe is a really great instrument, but it's a really, I, I, it's really hard to play. Um, I did take djembe lessons when I was in West Africa, but that's a difficult instrument to play well, mm -hmm. I mean, for me. So I don't, I don't do, but I think that, having those experiences and kind of sitting in, I sat in with a band there in Mali and being able to kind of work with all those different rhythms that are going on that are very different from, you know, typical rhythms here in America. Are, it's, it just kind of like informs my entire musical library, if you will. Right. You're also mm -hmm. a, a visual artist. I mean, here you are sitting on the floor, mm. you know, playing your instruments. When people see you for the first time, what do they say? People who don't know you, what do they say? When they see me perform? Perform. Um, they usually, there's usually something that they say, oh, I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect you to, I, I've never seen someone use the xylophone as a main instrument for a song, or I didn't expect you to sing Gangsta's Paradise, or 
I, you know, I didn't, I thought there were more people in your band because you had so many instruments, but you play all of them. And so usually it's just a, I guess an element of surprise or something that you don't expect, which is, I guess, uh, which is surprise. Which is good. <laughs> which is excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, it's nice. You know, I mean, I think I want to, I want to have fun too. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. And so, and I want to create kind of energy of fun and experimentation. And so I hope that that kind of uh, comes through when I perform. And it, it seems to most of the time. It seems to, right. You know. I mean, here today in the studio, people are looking around and saying, wow, she's yeah, great. Like, what is that? What's going yeah. on? Yeah. I mean, everybody's that applauding that her. I mean, it's really, really good. So what do you, what do you, what are your goals from here to now? What do you want to get to? Well, I mean, I think about my goals all the time. It's sometimes very intimidating to live in New York, you know, being around so many people who are making it. And sometimes it's, it's uh, inspiring, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes I'm just like, wow, I have all this support here and I'm really, you know, I'm working really hard and I have a booking agent now and I'm playing this venue and that venue and I'm meeting more people and, you know, I can, I can do it. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, wow, is this, is this any kind of realistic goal? But being mm -hmm. an artist, you're never a realist. So I know that those hard days that I have then the next day, you know, the one day I'm like, oh, really, can I do this? But then the next day I know it's gonna be the day where I'm like, oh, I have a new idea, now I have to go do this. And I, when I have new ideas, I have to share and them. And it happens right. with all artists, we all get that. We yeah. all get those blah days, and then we get the creativity, and this, it just, the light bulb goes right, off. Right, and that's and just and it, It's just how it is with artists, you know? Well, this is your album. It is. And your album is called? Tuscaloosa. And you can go to her website, which will give the credits at the end of the show. Allison, we enjoyed having you on the program today. We Thank love you. you. <laughs> this is Allison Greenfield, everybody. Thank you for watching The Rhythms of New York. Just wanna be
looking for a place to live somewhere to hide my body i'm looking for a space to give and take care of me i'm looking for anything where i can feel comfortable where it feels like home cause nothing feels right 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 no you don't want to fight 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 to feel comfortable isn't that what a home is supposed to be The Rhythms of New York is partially underwritten by Slap Energy Drinks.